Let's talk about electron capture. Electron capture is a nuclear process, which means that it affects the nucleus of an atom. And specifically, it affects the number of protons and neutrons that are living in the nucleus of an atom. Electron capture is kind of like uh, the forms of decay that we've already looked at, alpha decay, beta decay, and positron decay. And it's like these guys because it helps unhappy or unstable atoms deal with issues that they have. And it helps them become happier or more stable by changing the number of protons and neutrons they have in the nucleus. But it's different than these forms of decay too. Because for all those other forms of decay, there's an important part where they spit something out. Maybe it's an alpha particle or a beta particle. With electron decay, it's more about pulling things in and less about spitting things out of the nucleus. Let me show you what I mean. Like the forms of decay we've already learned about, electron capture helps atoms deal with a problem. And the problem that electron capture helps with is when atoms have too many protons and not enough neutrons. If you've already learned positron decay, you might remember that this is also the problem that positron decay helps fix. That's right. It just so happens that there are two ways that atoms can fix this. Positron decay is one of them, and electron capture is the other. I don't want you to have to worry about the details of when one of the processes will happen and when the other will happen. Just for right now, keep in mind that there are two ways to fix this, and it happens that electron capture is one of them. So anyway, this is the problem, and the solution, or one of the solutions, is electron capture. So you have too many protons in the nucleus, you want more neutrons. Wouldn't it be great if you could take a proton and turn it into a neutron? That is exactly what happens in electron capture. And in order to do this, an atom, or an atom's nucleus, takes one of the electrons that's in an orbital around the nucleus and pulls that electron in. So here's our atom, here's a nucleus, and these dots here represent the electrons, and the lines show that they're in motion. So we have one of these electrons, it's in an orbital here, gets pulled into the nucleus. So this electron comes together with a proton, and that makes a neutron. It turns the proton into a neutron. Something else gets made, too, when the proton gets turned into a neutron, and that's gamma rays. Gamma rays are high-energy waves that come out of the atom. You can think of them as kind of like exhaust or like heat from a fire. This process, combining an electron and a proton together to make a neutron, that makes a lot of energy. And a lot of that extra energy gets released as these high energy gamma rays that come, um, come out of the atom. So that is electron capture. When we talk about any of these nuclear processes, there are two important things that we always mention. One of them is the atomic number, which is the number of protons in an atom. And the other is a mass number, which is a number of protons and neutrons together in an atom. So I want to take a minute and look at how electron capture affects the mass number and the atomic number of an atom. So a proton gets turned into a neutron. What effect is that going to have on the atomic number? Well, since atomic number is a number of protons, if we lose one of our protons because it got turned into a neutron, the atomic number is going to go down by one. We have one fewer proton. What effect is this going to have on the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons together? Well, we take a proton and we lose that proton, but then we get a new neutron. So it turns out the mass number doesn't change at all because the proton that we lost gets canceled out by adding a new neutron. So there is zero change in the mass number, although the atomic number goes down by one. We can use this information to write out some nuclear equations that talk about electron capture. Here's how this works. I want to start with, uh, with uh, potassium-40 here. This guy is unhappy. Potassium here has too many protons and not enough neutrons. 
So it's going to pull in an electron from an orbital, an orbital that's near the nucleus. And so we write that like this. This is a sign for electron. Now sometimes when electrons are on the other side of the equation, when they're getting shot out, we can write them as beta particles or electrons. But since this guy isn't getting shot out of the nucleus, since it's in an orbital in the atom, we can only write it as an E, as an electron. It's not also a beta particle. It's just a regular electron that's sitting there in the atom. So anyway, this electron gets pulled into the nucleus of potassium-40 here. What are we going to get after this electron gets pulled in? We've said here that in electron capture, our atomic number goes down by 1. Okay, so let me take 19 here and decrease it by 1. So now I have 18 protons in my new atom. The mass number, though, the mass do number doesn't change because we lose a proton, but we get a new neutron. So the mass number is going to be 40. What's the letter that goes here? It's not going to be potassium because potassium has 19 protons. But when you change the number of protons in an element, you change what kind of element it is. So to figure out what we're going to put here for a letter, I've got to look on the periodic table, and I've got to find out which atom, which element, has an atomic number of 18. That is argon. The atomic number is right here when you see these on the periodic table. So AR, argon is what I'm going to put here. And I don't want to forget the exhaust, the extra energy that gets released as gamma rays when this process happens. So I can write the, uh, the Greek letter for gamma here. And now I have a complete equation of this guy capturing an electron. Let's look at one more, but I want to do it in reverse. Let's say that we have a mystery element that captures an electron. And after the electron capture occurs, I get an atom of magnesium, as well as the extra energy released as a gamma ray. So what did I start with if this is what I ended with? Let's use this information to figure out. The first thing is the mass number hasn't changed. So 26 is what my mass number is going to be. But during the process of electron capture, my atomic number goes down by 1. So that means that before electron capture happened, my atomic number would have been 1 higher. So I'd have 13 protons in the nucleus and then I lost one, got 12. So what's the chemical symbol that I write there? I look on the periodic table to find the element that has an atomic number of 13, and that's aluminum. So I'm going to put Al there. So that's how you write a nuclear equation that shows electron decay.